Hello, World Economic News on Woden's Day. Let's start with Muni debt in the United States. Who owns it? I'm not particularly interested, but it's quite a nice chart. Who owns it? The household sector. Now, if things are like they normally are with Fed information, and this is from the flow of funds, then household sector is often the rest. Things, people that they don't know who they are. So mutual funds, they know, are the biggest owners of muni debt and the rest of those below mutual funds and the rest are household sector. Could be anybody. Next chart is that same muni debt and the similar sorts of outfits that do own it and how they've been doing in their owning of it, how much they're owning of it they've been doing since 1950 in that chart. Might interest somebody, doesn't interest me. Federal Reserve Bank of New York, number three, have gone a-blogging. Yep, it's not the William Duddy, Dudley that's doing the blogging, but some of the cohorts up there at the New York Fed have done their first blog, and it's entitled How Consumers Have Been Deleveraging. And they say that, yes, they appreciate there's been a lot of default, especially on home mortgages. But uh, Americans do seem to be saving money. They're saving money and paying down debt. But, yep, that's interesting that the New York flood f Fed is now a blogging. Welcome to the blogosphere. This paper... It's a PDF. It's too heavy for me. It's got all sorts of scriggly, scriggly algebra all over it. But Rudiger Arend, OECD Paris, gives us monetary ease, a factor behind financial crises, some evidence from the OECD countries. And, OK, below now is the link, or no, it's the... Investopedia expl explanation of the Taylor rule, but I got it quite right last time, and it's basically Taylor, the professor, worked out that if unemployment is so much and inflation is so much, put it into a computer and it can spit out how much the um, interest rate should be, the short-term Fed's rate, Fed funds rate should be, and as long as you follow that, you won't go for far wrong. And since he came up with that, people have plotted it on what the Fed funds rate have, uh, has been. And people basically seem to believe that if there's a quick and easy rule of thumb to use, then the Taylor rule is the one to use. So let's go to this PDF now and the Taylor rule and actual interest rates. Start in the United States top left and the black line is the Taylor rule. That's where input, input, output what the interest rate should be according to the Taylor rule. The dotted line is the short-term interest rates that the Fed has made to exist. Where they've got blue bars going up means that the interest rate is a long way or enough below the Taylor rule. In other words, interest rates are too low. And you can see it's happened a couple of times in the United States, uh, 90 to 93, and for uh, 2000 to 2006 um, of this last decade. And obviously, if interest rates are too low, you're liable to get bubbles. Japan haven't been in bubble territory for the last uh, decade, at least. The euro area started the last decade with interest rates too low, generally for the whole uh, euro area. United Kingdom have been just about spot on. Canada a bit too low um, through the last decade. Austria spot on. Moving to the next page, which is Finland, France a bit low, Germany interesting, and probably why I've gone through all the rest of them. EU ECB sets the interest rates for the euro area, which just happens to correspond to exactly what is best for Germany, coincidentally. Move over to Greece and you can say it's wonkingly too low, the interest rate for Greece. Wonkingly too low for Ireland and a bit too low for Italy, but it's just right for Germany. And there's a few more. Um, Netherlands, Portugal, too low for Portugal, a bit too low for Spain. And moving further afield, Australia, New Zealand and Norway. 
if you follow the link there are, I think there are a couple more but um, you can stop and look at those for your country. Financial Times, why no Canadian and Australian housing bust? Question mark. Follow the link to read the article. Uh, it's residential mortgage debt outstanding as a percentage of GDP in the chart there, with Switzerland, Switzerland at the highest, then the cloggies, United Kingdom, Australia, United States and Canada. And the article tries to um, put some words forward why um, Australia and Canada's housing bubble hasn't burst yet. Moving out to the east and Taiwan export orders, uh, percentage year-on-year -year change. Now that um, brilliantly produced yellow line is zero, uh, zero increase. So you can see coming from the bottom left it was down at minus 20% uh, orders coming out of that recession depression world thing that happened oh so long ago. And then orders were spiking well up out of that, but in comparison to the year before, obviously. But you can see from January 10 to now, their orders have been on the down and down, which could be bad news for if they're representative of the whole of the Far East. Ireland, uh, Lisa O'Carroll in The Guardian. Uh, Ireland faces the default option as Europe's leaders talk tough. What do you want, Angela Merkel? A default, etc., uh, etc. Et the banking crisis in the country is getting worse, not better, etc. Ireland is suffering, and that is a. It's, if you have any interest in Ireland, that article is very well worth reading, and even more worth reading are all the comments that that go under it. An absolutely wonderful comment section on the trouble in Ireland and whether default is on the go or not and just how stupid the European overlautenants are being. Phantom Giants will not save the Eurozone by Wolfgang Munchau in the Financial Times bangs on the similar thing. How this new um, the most blatant phantom giant. He, he's on phantom giants. Apparently, it's a fairy tale from German mythology. Is the European stability mechanism, and basically, he's found out that it's a scam. And most all of the things that they've worked out, which the market seems so happy with, in their first meeting on the 11th of March, aren't really standing up to scrutiny. And they really have to do better when they meet again to def definitively define the details on the 24th of March. Tilt, uh, Financial Times gives us bye bye Bahrain, and uh, Bahrain's hopes of resting back its crown as the regional financial business centre from Dubai has gone up in a puff of tear gas. It's a worthwhile thing to have to the um, to be the central banking community in the uh, Middle East because there's quite a lot of money that goes on. Lebanon used to have it and now it's the fight between Dubai and Bahrain and Bahrain have just blown it as they say in a puff of tear gas. People like stability they don't like to be fussed do they? Washington Business with Bloomberg, Medvedev says Russia is to spend $700 billion on new weapons and warns arms makers against hiking prices. Moscow, President Dmitry Medvedev uh, said Friday that Russia will spend the equivalent of $700 billion by 2020 to modernize the military's aging arsenals, but sternly warned arms industries against jacking up prices. Who's going to be, and they've, they've really slammed their internal arms de makers for not keeping up with things. They're just selling old junk, so they're going to have to buy from foreign further afield. And on that, yes, some countries will then make the arms because it's profitable. And going back to the Irish question, our Ireland um, is demanded of to reduce their corporate uh, tax rates in return for getting lower interest rates but they won't do it they've always had low low um, low commercial rates corporate rates 
and it was pointed out that France, although they have a nominal high rate, give all sorts of deals for the corporations to come to France, and their rate is actually low down at about 8.7 uh, in reality, because countries want companies to come to their country so they can get a bit of tax, but much more importantly, to get the employment going. And it looks like employment can be found now making whiz-bangs and selling them to people that want to buy them, who think they're necessary still to buy whiz-bangs. The world hasn't sorted itself out overnight. Maybe it will tomorrow. <laughs>